Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to be continuing our Household of Fi series, and we're going to be following up with Vivian. And uh, Vivian, on this conversation, had the opportunity to do a consultation or just a chat, really, with our friend Tay, who writes over at financialtortoise.com. Now, Tay actually joined us back in episode 186, and you can find that at chooseify.com slash 186. And the context of that interview was multiple generations under one roof. Very excited to continue this conversation and to see the parallels that Vivian is experiencing and, and recognize that these are challenges that lots of people in our community have. And while, you know, to some people, it might seem like, you know, you're in, in an unusual situation for many individuals, not only is it usual, it's a cultural norm. And so recognizing that this is something, this is a real financial consideration for people allows us to then start to highlight best practices. And that's what we do on the ultimate crowdsource personal finance show. This is Choose FI. All right, guys, as mentioned, we're going to hop right into this episode. And Tay and Vivian had a chance to really go through some of the strategies and best practices, points of considerations when you're talking about multiple generations under one roof. To help me with this conversation, I'm my co-host Brad here with me today. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Jonathan, I'm doing quite well. And yeah, this was a fantastic conversation. It was nice of Tay to carve out some time to speak with Vivian and, and they really, they went deep on this and, and Jonathan, this was a blind spot for me and you, right? You talked about this being a normal thing in, in many cultures. And it was just something that, that I sadly was completely unaware of, but that's the beauty of having a crowdsourced show, right? Is we can learn about things that just would have never crossed their plate. And we can find people who can really explain what it's like in real life, right? So Tay talks about the sandwich generation, which in, I guess he is, as he said, in many Asian cultures, the children are responsible to a large degree for taking care of their aging parents. And that could mean in his case, he's actually living under one roof with his parents to being responsible for them financially, right? So like, this is a major, major issue for a significant portion of the population. And it's something that we're really trying to highlight because people have questions about this. But again, while this might not be what's the cultural norm in, in my family, I have to say it has opened my eyes to issues that I am gonna be dealing with, but I just never would have thought of. So, I mean, this has been a huge benefit for me. I think it's gonna be a huge benefit for the entire community, because I'm going to be responsible for my parents in some way, shape or form. While it might not be financial in the, in the purest sense, at some point, I'm going to have to help them make decisions. I'm going to have to help prepare documents for them or, you know, some things with their health, et cetera, et cetera. So this is something that I need to start thinking about. So yeah, I mean, this was a huge benefit for me and it was just real, a real eye opener. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and uh, get right into this episode. Just a few things that I think you should really be paying attention to as you're listening to this. Maybe you're taking some notes. Um, things that things that really stood out to me is just for individuals that are actually cohabiting with their with their parents. What is their perception or their take as they've done research currently on the ROI of long term care insurance? Is that just an obvious choice that everybody goes and does right ahead of time? really pay attention to what they actually said about that and what their concerns were. The other thing was, what about when there's different priorities on spending? Uh, and so maybe the, the parental figure has some level of income, even if it's a smaller amount, but you know, their spending goals and your spending goals and you're sharing some costs, you know, they're going in two different directions. Uh, what about those social security calculations? Are they eligible for it? You know, especially when you're talking about an immigrant family, do they even know how it works and what they're eligible for and, and what the nuance is there and at what point that would actually kick in? Uh, there's a lot of complicated financial stuff that happens right between the ages of 59 and 65. You have, uh, you have social security that you're going to become eligible for. You're potentially eligible now to draw out of your tax advantage vehicles. And then you have Medicare kicking in at 65 and there's potentially a gap there. How do you bridge that? That and so much more. Huge thanks to Tay for coming on the show. Very generous with this time. And Really, just this is an incredible conversation that you need to hear. And uh, if you want to follow up with him, you know, you're taking some notes, you want to follow up, you have additional questions, highly encourage you to check out his site where he really documents their own journey, you know, as a sandwich generation, parents and children in the same house. And you can find him at financialtortoise.com and you can hear the episode we did with him. It was choosefi.com slash 186. And Jonathan, for the audience, we're doing these Households of Fi episodes as kind of like a longitudinal study, right? So we're finding people when they're just getting into Fi, 
And then we're following, we're touching back with them every three, four, six months, whatever it may be with any questions they have, just getting updates. And Vivian, if you want to catch up on her story, we introduced her on episode 221. And then her first full episode was 255. And you can always find those chooseavi.com slash and then the episode. So it's 221 or 255. All right, guys, we're going to get out of the way and we'll follow up with you on the back end of the episode. Hey, Vivian. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, so I'm Tay. Uh, I have a blog called Financial Tortoise. Um, so uh, the area that I write about primarily is um, a from a sandwich generation perspective. So I have two young kids and uh, my Asian parents that actually live with us. So we've been living in a multi-generational household for about seven, eight years now um, mm -hmm. with, uh, with my wife, our kids, with my, both my parents, all one big household. Um, and for us, my wife and I, we've had a, um, we had a last 10 years has been like a big financial journey for us. We paid off $105,000 in student loans, um, while, you know, cohabiting with our parents and raising our kids. Um, uh, now, you know, we really want to pursue financial independence. Um, so I was in an episode before, uh, with choose FI just talking about, um, the pros and cons of a multi-generational household. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, it gets kind of crazy here. There's, you know, the benefits of, you know, having, having my parents around being able to help out with the kids and such, but at the same time, you know, you also have your parents around to, yeah. <laughs> to, uh, to watch you, you know, with your kids and tell you how to raise your kids in your thirties. So mm -hmm. those are the, the pros and cons. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Maybe we can segue to you, Vivian. Okay. So I'm Vivian Nim. If people have heard my story, I'm recently dealing with uh, cancer. Mm -hmm fighting for breast cancer. Um, also going through a tough time of having a separation before me signing up for Choose FI documentary. There's no separation, but now I'm going through a separation and a child custody uh, battle. So it, it's been tough, but yeah. you know, like you, I also have parents living with me. The pro of having a parent is that they, they help you raise the kid. Right. But the con, of course, you have the parent <laughs> there and right. they are different generation and you know, they do things certain way that is not the same as you because it's just different generation, different misunderstanding. Right, right. The question that really concerned me since you, you've been through it, uh, you live with your parents, uh, the sandwich generation for uh, seven years that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, there's so much thing that you, you don't know that might come up unforeseen event because parents are getting older and you don't right. know what kind of medical condition that they may end up or medical bills. Those are the questions I have. Like, I'm, I'm not okay. sure what kind of insurance that um, I suppose sign them up or um, long-term long -term, disability. Yeah, yeah long-term sure. care, yeah. long-term disability. Yeah. So those, those, are, those are my questions. Okay. Yeah, I, I got them before. So thank you for uh, um, just reiterating. And then I heard your podcast with the, um, uh, I think the interview with, I forgot her name, but there was, she was a lawyer. Yeah, she's a lawyer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I got a, uh, I was able to hear kind of your, your backstory for things. So thanks for sharing. And there's a lot going through your life and um, <laughs> so, trying to, you know, balance it all. But I think a lot of people can really find value in kind of hearing your story and the courage that it takes to kind of go through it. So, so yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's very similar. Like you, you do both of your parents, your mom and your dad both live with you? Uh, right now, just my mom. Okay. Just to help out. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask how she, how old she is? She born fifty nine, so she's she's not sixty five yet. So okay. She's not qualified for Medicare because Medicare. Okay. Yeah. Yet. Got it. And she's a she's a retired teacher, so she got some um because she worked Pension? for LA. She she worked for LAUSD. Oh, okay. In Los okay. Angeles. Got it. Okay. Okay. So she's got some uh retirement, but it's not a yeah. lot. It's just basically a thousand a month just for basic living, but it's not enough it. to, to support her own self. Like if she live alone by herself. Yeah. Like by, yeah. yeah. Do they, uh, do they provide, I thought LAUSD or some pension plans had a healthcare gap they cover between retirement and Medicare. You know, I'm not sure because I think because she's retires uh, younger than expected. Okay. She probably don't get 
the gap. I'm not sure because my mom, um, as our parent, they're not very good at finance. Right. Yeah. <laughs> for Asian, we always joke that they always rely on their kid for retirement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's normal. I mean, yeah. it's actually yeah. like you know historically that's very normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's 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 interesting because uh, in Korea, like where my family's from, like that was always just kind of a norm. Like the last you know hundreds of years, and then it's like more recently now that. The younger generation is, you know, kind of struggling with that idea of like us having to take care of our parents. So, right. yeah. So, like with my parents, they both applied for. I mean, the biggest benefit I think is the Social Security and Medicare. So, I'm assuming your mom hasn't. She hasn't uh, started pulling Social Security. No, she hasn't. She hasn't. Okay. So, one thing about Social Security is that there is like a window in which she can start pulling between sixty two. And then um, right now, I think it's like a little over 66 where you're at your full age to receive the full amount of Social Security. And then if you wait until you're 70, you get a little bit more. Okay. So if you think about like if I got Social Security $1,000 a month when I'm 66, if you pull it when you're 62, you get like 20, 30% less. And then mm. if you were to pull it when you're 70, you get 20 to 30% more. So then if you pulled early in that example of $1,000, if she started pulling when she was 62, she would be getting like 700 a month. If she waited till she was 70, she can get like 12 to 1300 a month. So, so my other question is, since my mom, uh, she retired last year, yeah. she, do you have to work until you're 70? In order no, to get so the social security is dependent upon the, the like there's a calculation they do for credits. Like mm -hmm. you have to get a certain number of credits. Um, I think it's like 40, but I think the general rule of thumb is if she worked for 10 years and paid into social security, then she's eligible, eligible to receive it. Okay. So she's 61 now, right? You said she was born in 59? 59, yeah, yeah I so, think so. Mm -hmm. uh, she should start getting, uh, I know they started sending these um, social security summary sheets a couple years prior to turning 62. That shows, hey, if you started pulling, this is how much you would receive. Mm -hmm. So if not, you can go on to, I think it's a social security, just a website. I think it's ssa.gov. And then you can create an account. She can create an account like plugging in her info or birth date. And then you can see the estimates of how much she would receive if she mm -hmm. started pulling when she's 62, or she could wait until she hits the full age of 66, or if you can, she, she can wait until she's 70 so you can get more. So with my parents, my mom started pulling when she was like, uh, they don't want to pull early because then you're locked into that amount uh, forever. So if you could wait, you want to try to uh, wait so that you can pull as much as you can. So my dad actually waited until he was 70. You don't want to wait beyond 70 because that's the, that's the cap. Then you're not going to get any more benefit. But if you could like wait till 70, then you, you're getting a lot more in your benefits. Okay. But, but, you, had to, but you had to work in, uh, for at least 10 years, is that correct? Yes. I think okay. it's, uh, the general rule of thumb is 10 years that you paid into Social Security. Okay. Yeah. But you can... If you haven't started receiving those sheets, you can go to the, the Social Security website and then actually mm -hmm. check how much she's eligible for. But if she's worked at LAUSD for a while, I'm assuming... Yeah, she's yeah, been she's there for 17 it. years. So she's yeah, so she should... There shouldn't be any problem. She should be eligible. I think it's about understanding how much it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, for my parents, like, we started living together right when they were turn, like, starting to collect Social Security. So, I mean, the way the, like for them, they really didn't save. I mean, they didn't even know what a 401k was. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. yeah 401k, Roth. Yeah. Like, I mean, this is all over their head. Yeah. And then I think the only thing they really understood was real estate because that's something that they could see. So thankfully they had, a, um, they had a home, which they rolled what of remaining like, um, equity that they had into our current home. So then they were able to, uh, they bought the current home that we were living in. So they put in the down payment and then we, we essentially took over the mortgage. Okay. I see. But then other than that, I mean, they didn't really have anything. So then 
once the basics of like, you know, the most expensive thing is really housing and transportation. Yeah. Uh, when you look at your budget. So then because their housing is taken care of and then they have their cars that they don't have to pay, um, they don't have, you know, they don't have a payment on. So it's the social security, which is about a thousand dollar a month for each of them is enough for them to live off of. So, I mean, if your mom is able to collect pension from LAUSD and social security, whether she pulls it early or she pulls it at full age, or, you know, if she was willing to wait a little bit more, I mean, in my mind, if she doesn't have to worry, if she's living with you, she doesn't have to worry about overhead, I'm assuming, right? Yes, she doesn't have to worry about. Right, yeah. So that, I think, helps out a lot as regards to not having, I mean, I think that's, that's really the biggest thing with a lot of the elderly is that with Social Security, it's just not enough to pay for rent, pay for a car, and pay for food at the same time. So if, if you can take out the, the housing cost and transportation cost, then I think that, I mean, like, I, I kind of joke around how, like, my parents are, like, living it up now. Like, you know, they get to do whatever they want. Like, I, 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 it, it's funny, like, I wake up because I've been working at home now. And then I see, like, my mom's schedule. Like, she, she wakes up. She, she gets breakfast for my, uh, for my dad. And then she, like, just goes and watch Korean dramas for three hours. Takes a nap. I was like, well, that's, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I wish I, wish I could do that one day. <laughs> yeah. But my mom's different. She's more of outgoing. She likes to go out and travel one day. And um, mm. that's what she would like to do. And my dad, same thing. Um, he, he would like to go and travel. But yeah. unfortunately, their income is not high enough for them to travel. So, well, you can that, you can yeah. maybe you can help them out with the. Um, uh, I don't know if you if you've learned the travel hacking. I'm that, uh, learning right now. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Brad and Jonathan has a really great episode. It's like one of the earlier ones. They tr- talk about the the chase gauntlet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that's how I learned it, and then um, I was able to actually take my parents to Hawaii with my kids with the hotels and the flights all through travel points. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. Before, before COVID hit. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. that's my, my goal coming up is to take my parents and uh, uh, my daughter to Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. After, yeah. after this whole COVID. <laughs> right. Over. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Hawaii, I think is, uh, it's actually pretty, um, there's a lot of different, if you just Google how to fly to Hawaii on points. There's so many different routes that you can take. Okay. So yeah, once you figure that out, it's like one of those pillars of FI that you have to, (laughs) like one of those skill sets that you have to learn. That's true. It's always good to have a skill set like that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, definitely. As regards to healthcare, so, Mm -hmm. so what coverage does your mom have right now? So right now she, I think she's getting private insurance. She's getting a blue card, blue shield. Um, okay. Okay. My mom's not as healthy as she used to. Um, the reason why she's uh, retired because she uh, has stroke and she's no longer able to. She always fall on her when she was at work. So she, I think she break her back. Oh, um, no. um, kind of rupture her tendon also and she has surgery for that she's she's better now but okay. that's that's the whole main reason why she's retired i think healthcare is part of cost a lot for her right now she has private insurance okay not sure how much she paid for it but i know it's not it's not cheap <laughs> she got blue cross blue shield got it got it okay so i mean She's 61, so she has four years until she's eligible for Medicare. So there isn't really like an ideal solution before Medicare hits. I think it's, you know, getting a private private health care insurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But just a couple of things regarding Medicare that you do want to know is that the enrollment period is pretty sensitive. Like there is actually like, there's a seven month window that you have to enroll which is uh, three months before she turns 65. So you want to like market, oh, market somewhere like okay. <laughs> that three months before she turns 65 and then three months after she turns 65, like there's a seven month window okay, <laughs> in which you have to make sure you enroll in Medicare. And then there's like different parts to Medicare. There's like part A, B, C, and D. And then A and B is like hospital and Medicare. Most people don't realize though, is that the basic part of Medicare is covered with, you know, just being eligible for Medicare. But then if you want the medical insurance, like the hospital visits covered, you actually have to pay a premium for that, which I think is like a hundred or 200 a month. 
And what they do is if you're collecting social security, they would just pull it out of your social security amount. So that was one of the things that I saw with my mom's social security. She's like, well, I thought I was eligible for like, you know, 900. How come I'm only getting 700? And okay, then we looked at it, we're like, oh, they're taking, because you said you wanted the part B of Medicare, they're taking that portion out before the social security comes to you. So that's just something that you want to, like, as she gets closer to 65, you want to just make sure that she doesn't miss that window. And then you're, 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 um, you're helping her to apply for it. So she gets the Medicare. And then if you want to, it's all actually the same portal that you apply for Medicare and social security. Okay. Yeah. So if you're going to wait until she turns 65 to collect social security, then you can say when you're applying for Medicare, I want to accept social security now, or I want to wait until later. Yeah. So then it's kind of like the key ages that you want to, you want to kind of like keep in back of your mind. I mean, she's like right around the corner. She's 61. Like, so yeah. she's yeah. eligible for social security 62. She can start collecting. She can, she's eligible for Medicare 65. And then she, you guys can choose when to, when to actually pull out social security. So you'll need to kind of work through her, just kind of her overhead expenses, what she needs to see when the right time to pull those triggers are. Okay. Another thing is that, um, so do you have long-term care for your parents? No, I don't. No? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's something that I've, I've read about too, but then mm-hmm. from what I've, what I've heard, I guess it's really hard to get like affordable one now. I guess you could a little while back. I mean, this is just kind of from what I've heard, but um, yeah, I haven't gotten long-term care insurance. I've started researching into what are some long-term care options. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like they have, uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah. The the reason why that's in the, back in my head because my, my mom, like I said, she had stroke. Right now she can yeah. move normally, but you never know when another stroke are hit and one day she can't move anymore. So exactly, yeah. And she yeah. might need long-term care or some kind of care. Yeah, maybe I should do more research on that. But I don't, I, I don't think Medicare, I'm not sure they have uh, offer long-term care, right? I have so... To look into that. I think Medicare only covers portion of long-term care. I think, don't quote me on this, but I think it's just if they were to go to the hospital and then they are staying, uh, they have to go to the hospital for surgery and they're staying at the hospital Mm -hmm. for um, like recovery or long-term care just for recovery, I think that portion is covered. But um, it's not not the full like long-term care. I, I definitely know that. So that's something that like I've been thinking about and I don't really have a good, a good uh, solution at this point as well. It's just, I know that there's like, you know, um, being at home and you can hire like skilled nursing to come and then I think some parts of it are covered, some parts of it are not. And then there's like assisted living place or like skilled nursing. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think, yeah, it's, I think it's a very important topic that I'm sure like no one has a really good solution on yet. It's just, in my mind, I guess what I always kind of think about is that it's going to happen. That's what you figure out. (laughs) Yeah. So it's like, I got to, end of the day, like, I think one of the, one of the things I really appreciate about, you know, the FI community is that like, I shared this story when I was going through the interview with Brad and Jonathan was uh, with my wife's grandmother. She Mm -hmm. uh, was diagnosed with lung cancer she was 90 at the time. And then it was interesting because, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the adults weren't in a finance, financial position to be able to kind of step in and then like even spend the time to kind of take care of her or kind of navigate the system with her. Mm-hmm. So then I think that's what kind of like I've been in back of my mind thinking is like, there, you know, there's a lot of different options we can go. You can go, you know, at home or you can, you know, find uh, assisted living or something that could be compatible. But at the same time, like if I'm not in a strong financial position where I could maybe step away from my job for a little bit or I don't have the cushion, then I can't even think about that when the time comes. So I think that's right. where whenever I kind of throw out this question about, uh, you know, what do you, how do you, how do we best take care of our Aging parents, if they haven't mm-hmm. like care of themselves financially, 
even like a lot of the older kind of folks, I, I, I'm not sure if you are familiar with Jim Collins, Jill Collins. Yeah. 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 So Simple Path Wealth, I, I asked him the exact same question when I met him. And he said, the best thing you can do is take care of yourself. Like if you're in the strongest financial position, that's how you can take care of the people around you. That's um, true. The, the loved ones. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of, I've been doing some research, but like, I don't have a clear defined, like, right. this is a right long-term care. It's more mm-hmm. of like, okay, I need to get my, my, fi- my finances and our household as strong as as possible. And then if time comes where they really need my time or uh, our the help, then I have the resource. I can step away from my, mm-hmm. I can step away from my job if I need to, and then be able to assist in that way. So that's kind of lead me to another question for you. Um, yeah. So for your five number, do you plan, do you put them into your spends and, you know, thinking about the healthcare in the future, do you plan them into your spends for your five number? I haven't really thought about the healthcare, but I, I, we've definitely considered the, their overhead. So then like our current home right now, we incorporate the cost of the home into mm-hmm. our kind of long-term, like the end of the day, uh, everyone's going to need a roof over their head, including yeah. my parents. Yeah, like, you know, you, it's interesting because we joke around how, oh, like with just my wife and I and our kids, we could totally downsize into this like tiny place yeah. and then we can pursue FI faster. But it's not, that's not an option for us because, you know, we, we have our parents with us. So for us, we have, we incorporate like, okay, in order to kind of maintain this house so that they have a roof over their head, Later on, you know, with long-term care, if they want to, you know, I'm, I'm sure most people want to want to age in place, age at home. So then um, we, all, we always incorporate the cost of this home into RFI number. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right now, I'm just struggling a little bit because my mom, like I said, from a different generation. Yeah. I, I did listen to the podcast of your episode. And one thing that really hit me, what you say is, um, I think at the end, you really have to have a lot of compassion yeah, and understanding definitely. of your parents because they, they, for example, my mom lived through a uh, Vietnam war. Right. So she wouldn't, when we go Costco, oh my God, that's my huge expense <laughs> right now. She would wrap up so much food and hold so much food yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and water. And yeah. it, it, it's driving me crazy because things that we don't need right now. Right. But she, because she, her generation, the where she used city. to live. Yeah. yeah. So that's what she's been doing, and it's been it's been a little challenge. <laughs> how do you how do you navigate some of the I guess if you can call it like conflicts or you know these t- different views on like how to approach <sighs> food? <laughs> because you know I'm Asian. I'm not sure about how your parent, but my parent they don't they don't budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no budget. Yeah, <laughs> they don't well, know what that means. Especially yeah. when it comes to food, you yeah. know. Especially when it comes to food, I guess Asian they like to beat you and make sure you're happy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> so especially when it comes to food, uh, there's no budget. When I told my mom, "Hey, your limit with let's say uh, six hundred a month," and she she can't do it. It's just I'm still trying to figure mm. out how to navigate this. <laughs> do you guys have any like share cost at home? Does she like? Um, I think she. The only thing she held out right now is the uh, food because that's our number one expense. Because she just right. like to spend wherever she sees. Yeah. <laughs> but um, overall, I pay for everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I assume she's like helping out with cooking and. Yes. Yes. Okay. And help okay. with my child. So. Yeah. Right. That's really does she, helpful. D- does she help out with? Um, how do you do childcare right now? Um, right now, um, since we're still going through a uh, custody battle, um, my mom's just watching her when I go to work. Okay. okay. So just the reason why my mom here with me, because uh, <laughs> she's watching my child here and my sister have kids too. So my dad always mm. there watching the kids. So, oh, wow. <laughs> so it's just kind of like hectic, but yeah. 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 So it's not just my mom I had to take care of, but my dad too in the future, but we'll see. How right. Goes. Yeah, it's that perfect sandwich generation situation where like, especially yeah. when you have like young kids, like uh, when you have young kids, the childcare, I think it's the, it's the biggest surprise and the challenge. That was a big reason why we, we decided to cohabitate with my parents because when my wife was pregnant, we were like, we we're just scratching our head on like, how are we going to do childcare? Like, like you drop them off somewhere, like, and they're like six months old or you hire like an in-house nanny, but then they're like super expensive. So it doesn't make sense. So I'm just like, we, th- that was one of the big reasons why I think at the time, like not by choice, we're like, all right, let me, let's try this cohabitation thing and then see how it works out. But 
surprisingly, I mean, with all the ups and downs, I think now in hindsight, we kind of look at like that helped us to, I think, because we're able to commit like full time into our careers. And then like right now, like in our 30s, you know, that those are the times when you're kind of building up your career and your experience. So then, uh, you know, if you were to take a step back, then you got to kind of get back into it later on, which is a little bit harder to do. So I think in hindsight, it was, it was kind of a, I mean, there's a cost to everything, right? It doesn't come for, it doesn't come for free, like living with your, That's true. <laughs> living with your parents, yeah. like, you know, ha- having your mom there to watch your kid is like, in theory, great, but at the same time, like comes with all the other like you know advice on how to raise your kids yes <laughs> yeah, that's true. yeah don't do this don't do that yeah, yeah. back in my days <laughs> yeah back in my days that's a lot <laughs> yeah 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 but you know it, it's been you know i i'm still very grateful for my mom to be here you know yeah with, yeah. with the child care is the huge expense um so i'm I'm grateful um whatever stress i'm going through she's going through the same thing so it's always good to have parents, even though there's a lot of conflict, you know, sometimes. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So are you, consider, are you guys considering kind of cohabiting together in the long run? You know, I try my parent crazy too. I'm not sure about you, how you try your parents, but <laughs> <laughs> I try her crazy too. Sometimes she's okay. me, she say, I'm going to go back to Vietnam and live here <laughs> and leave you. <laughs> so I, right now, I'm not sure. So I'm not sure yeah. what she want to do. I mean, my mom, she loves to travel too, so... Yeah, she haven't been in her country for a long time, so she might want to go back there and maybe for a month and just you know travel around and come back. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, I think it's such a different like dynamics, like living together as adults, um, especially I think kind of what you're talking about when there's this like huge cultural chasm too. Uh, yeah, it's. I think that's one of the big things that my wife and I really learned is just like empathizing on how to um like you know understand like where they're coming from like why they like with my mom i think it's uh like you talk about like your mom like buys a lot of food like my my parents grew up like in the post korean war generation so then like they never threw away food so yeah, then i think they here. were sh- I mean, if you think about it like it's a small thing like food right kitchen food but then like we had so many conflicts as regards to like, like the kids are only done halfway through the rice and like, we're going to throw it away now. And they're like, and my mom's like, no, like you got to keep that. Like you can feed them tomorrow. I'm like, but that doesn't make sense. Like now, like <laughs> you're just adding more clutter or. Yeah. I think that was one of the, we, my wife and I joke around. That's like the kitchen's a battleground. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we even thought about like, we should just build a second kitchen. Cause or this is, <laughs> this is not going to work. That's true. Yeah. That's but true. I mean, I think, all of it I, in the last seven, eight years, like just, uh, it really helped us to reflect on in order to avoid conflict, in order to kind of, you know, there's no winning here. It's more of like, how do I, how do we, why is she so, um, like so fired up about this topic? And then just like, you know, they they don't understand where we're coming from, but they're trying, like, it takes a lot of effort for us to really, try to understand where they're coming from and why they're behaving in that way. And then I think that's where like it, it builds a lot of just compassion and empathy that like mm-hmm. we wouldn't have if we didn't, I think, go through this process of living together. That's true. I, I agree. And, yeah. and it's tough, especially when you have parents always set on their way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so we, we have to be more compassionate and more empathetic. Yeah. And they, I mean, they've yeah. lived for 60, 70 yeah. years, their way of life. And that's how they survived. Yeah. And they, that's how they got here through all of the tribulations that they've gone through in their life. And that's how they came to this point that, you know, that uh, stubbornness and grit. So yeah, then it's like, I'm not going to change that. <laughs> yeah. It's just, yeah, it's so know. true. Are, are you uh, concerned at all of um, unforeseen like expense that might come your way if, when your parents grow older or just follow a JL Collins advice and just build up the finance? Yeah, that's kind of a, uh, I mean, I think if you look at, you know, like your just finances, there's, there's different ways you can save, like, you know, your retirement account, your 401k, your Roth. But I think, uh, Part of it too is like, we can't really control our parents, kind of like mm-hmm. you said. So then even mm-hmm. if I tell my mom, it's like, you should save your money here. Like, oh, I don't no. know if she's going to really <laughs> listen. 
Yeah. So end of the day, you know, we can provide the overhead. It's mutually beneficial. But I think the approach that we're taking is, yeah, let's let's what we can control is our finances. Let's get that as strong as possible. Let's try to increase our savings rate. Let's try to live below our means. Um, you know, while we're while we're both able to work full time, let's let's be able to just get all of our finances as strong as possible. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, if there are unexpected expenses, we, we can handle it together. You know, they joke around how, um, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure, I'm sure you've heard about this, how like, you know, when people are under financial duress, like you can't really think straight, like, yeah, you know, people's true. IQ, because you're, you're just kind of like in that survival mode so that you're that's not true. able to like, you're not able to kind of solve problems in a very smart way. So I think the thought is, you know, if we can get our finances in order and we're not having to worry about our day to day, if something did happen to my parents where we needed to step in and we needed help more, then it's okay. Like we can figure it out. We can, mm-hmm. we can all, fi- we can, we can step in, we can figure it out. If one of us had to step away from our jobs and spend a little more time at home, we can figure this out. But like, we're not, we're not burdened by this, like, the stress of finance. I think that's the big thing that we are, we're trying to mitigate. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to save up as much as I can. I, I told my mom I try to do 50 and she 50% of my income, yeah. she think I'm crazy, so. Does, uh, <laughs> does your mom have any, do they think it's kind of weird that like, hey, now you've worked really hard, you became a pharmacist and why Pay are you living? Debts. And why are yeah. you living so frugally? Like, you, you know, yeah, you should be. <laughs> they, they think I'm stingy and yeah, yeah, calling yeah, me yeah. stingy. And uh, I, I'm not sure that's how with your parents call me stingy. Like, you have money. Why can't you just, you know, it's just food, you know, it's not oh, totally. Food. Yeah, just, yeah. Just hold all this food that we don't use and it will go bad in a few my parents, <laughs> I think my parents are, they think it's like I went, my wife and I went the reverse. As we made more money, like, we became just stingier. <laughs> <laughs> Because I think part of it is, the, I'm sure you can attest to this, like part of the like Asian culture, Korean culture too, is like you, sh- you wear your wealth yes. on your sleeve, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Like it depends on you. It's so much of the story behind, I think, immigrants is that, hey, they came here and sacrificed so that you can live that upper middle class life that we saw and we envied. So you should be driving a nice car. You should be going on vacation. Exactly. You, sh- like you should express your... You should show your success so I can boast to my friends about how successful my kids are. Exactly. Yet, That's what like, do. <laughs> I'm embarrassed because yeah. you're driving this beat up old car and you're not willing to, we're not, you're not willing to uh, go out and, you know, buy fancy food. So, yeah. Yeah. It's that. yeah. That's exactly what I'm going through right now because um, uh, when I had my child, I wear my maternity pants for two years because I try to lose weight. <laughs> and my mom was like, you're a pharmacist. You embarrassed me. Why? Right. <laughs> you know, I didn't raise yeah. you to be like this. So I'm like, okay, mom. Yeah, I can't take you, you anywhere, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's like but poor pharmacist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's a very, I think there's a, the pursuing FI, I think there's that other kind of a hurdle to overcome, like, from a like coming from more of an immigrant family i think that cultural kind of a, a barrier that you have to overcome so cool any any other like um i guess uh do you have any like when you first heard about like the whole i guess choose that fire like financial independence like is there anything else that really excites you about it or that you want to achieve through through um it? what really excites me about is um you know, at, at the beginning, I thought you need to have a business in order to have like a financial independence. But when I find out about Choose FI, I realized I, you don't need a business. You just need to save a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that's what excited me. Another thing is that I, I just started. So I haven't maxed out. I just maxed out my uh, 401k. That's exciting. Yeah. Yes, that is exciting. So the next part is to uh, max out the Roth before this year end. Right. And, you know, I just need to dig deep on what to invest in. I think that's where I am now. Got it. Does, mm-hmm. um, yeah, like the best investing book that I've, I've read is Jim Collins's yes, A Simple Path to Wealth. Like it just simplifies everything. So yeah, I would totally recommend like just use, like follow the, follow the principles in that book. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to yeah. investing. I, I am following his principle right now, but I also listen to the other podcast that say, um, as you age, it's going to get riskier. So we'll see how it goes. 
but I, I'm not trying to be fancy. I'm just trying to be simple. <laughs> simple. Yeah, I mean, okay. that's. I think that's yeah. the biggest thing. Is like it's simple. It's just so simple, and then it's 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 like so much of、uh, this whole FI journey is the savings rate, and then putting it into like smart investments. So then, I think we can always kind of refine it later on. But initially,、yeah. when you're getting started, you just need to. It's like a. I use this analogy with my wife all the time. Like right now, we just have a shovel. We just gotta shovel as much as we can in there. And then you know, let it just compound and grow. That's true. Cool. Any? Do you have any other like money challenges that you're、um, that's on top of your mind outside of the items that we discussed? Oh, you have. Ch- I'm not sure how old your children is. Have you、um, put aside money for college?、Um, I think that's another because I、yeah. spoke with the lawyer last time about、yep. it also. Yeah, I think she mentioned the five two nines.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we have. Yeah, we,、uh, my kids are four and six, so they're still fairly young too.、Um, so we started a five two nine for them. We have some in there. We put a little bit in. I mean, I think the other other part two that I've thought a lot about, and then、uh, Brad and Jonathan talks about a lot in the、uh, in their other podcast is like the future of work. Um, yeah. How it's gonna? It, it could look very different, just like the future of work today looks very different from twenty, thirty years ago. So, I think we'll, you know, we still want to have some in the five to nine. But I think the other thing that is making me think a lot about is,、um, kind of like our parents, like, like with my parents, they didn't know anything about after college. All they knew was just go to college, get a good degree. And then, like you're on your own, but like, hey, just pick from these like five careers. Like, you can be a lawyer, you know, like work in healthcare, be an engineer. Like, pick one of these, and you're good. Like, that's what、right. I've seen. Like, people who are successful, that's what what's it what they've done. But the working world is it's constantly changing and so dynamic. So I think for me, I think as I as I as I'm kind of learning more about the um. Just kind of whole FI community thinking about how do I? It's not just about saving for college, but how do I prepare them so they're ready to be、um, productive adults? So then,、um, I think Brad talked about like how he was talking to his daughter about how she can like start a business, and I think she's only like ten or twelve. But、right. then, like I mean, for me, I think that's like my kids are a little bit. I try to talk to them, but they just you know just. <laughs> Right now, <laughs> but I think those are kind of things that, in the back of my mind, is like, oh, I don't want to just blindly put save for college, and then the value of college is so different now. So then,、right. like, it's more of how do we approach this in a smart way, so that if they do go to college, that it's most, you know, it's uh, it's most affordable, and then it's most impactful in their future career and what they want to do. So I think that's the kind of thing in back of my mind is saving for college is important, but like be very intentional and purposeful on like why we're saving and towards what、mm-hmm. direction. And I I think the biggest thing is I want to equip my kids to be able to、um, like navigate the you know the the working world l- later on without just believing that hey if you go to college get a degree like the job will be there because it's not、mm-hmm. it's like the world、that's、is、true. changing. Yeah, and th- that's my concern too with the five to nine because. I mean, I want to save for college, but what happens、yeah. if my daughter don't want to go to college? Right, and, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, and、um, with this online world now, it's, it's、yeah. so much easier for them to start business than in back in the old day. Yeah. yeah. So、um, I'm just thinking if I imagine if I put everything in the five to nine, and then she doesn't go to college, what can I do with that kind of,、uh, finance or money? I think there's some flexibility with five to nine. You can. Uh, I think someone else can use it for their education, or you can use it for your own education too. So then,、um, business education to... probably, right?、Uh, I does, think... does that count? Like if they, I don't know the specifics, but I think it's the broad kind of the umbrella of what's considered education. I think you can use it for like technical schools too.、Um, but my wife and I even joked around how like, yeah, if my if our kids don't go and they don't use it, like I'll use it. <laughs> Like I don't mind going back to school. I'll learn something,、right. <laughs> you know, by that time.、Yeah. So、mm-hmm. um, I think there is, I think there is a purpose for it. I I think, but we don't want to just blindly save up. So I think it's a good good thought that you have as regards to what if your daughter doesn't want to go to college or what if she wants to pursue some other career.、Mm-hmm. Um, but I think there is some flexibility that 
like, you know, if you had a niece that is wanting to go to college, you can, I think you can redirect that fund to okay. somebody else, or you can use it or someone you can, you can pass down to uh, your grandchildren, like your daughters. Oh, yeah. Like, so it's, I think there's some flexibility around it, but I think okay. it's, it's a good question to ask. Like, let's not just blindly save for college, but like, think about right. like why we're saving. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A um, couple other things that, like, uh, I think it'd be good for you to start thinking about with your parents though, is also, um, estate planning. I'm not sure if you are, uh, you ever had that conversation with your parents? Oh, boy, I don't think <laughs> I have. So I, I mean, I think we have briefly, but it's yeah. just nothing serious. You just say, Oh, I, I put your name on the benefit on the bank account. They, they okay. mentioned who should I put? That's all I did. <laughs> yeah. But, but nothing it, like going it. through the lawyer and do estate planning. Yeah. But that's something, you know, to, to bring up. Yeah, definitely. Like if you haven't, have you done your estate planning? No, I'm, I'm yeah. still in the process. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's what we just did it like last year. So then we, 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 uh, got a trust, got the power of attorney and all of that. So I think Mm -hmm. that's probably a good thing to start thinking about for yourself and your daughter. Uh, um, There's a lot as regards to like, you know, if something was happened to you, like who would have custody of your daughter? It's not as like black and white from what I've, what I've heard. So we went through and just got a whole trust and got all the paperwork done. And that, that also uh, motivated us to talk to my parents about it. And then, so they went out and got a, a trust and a will, a power of attorney, all of that completed. So that's very, I think that's pretty important as they, as they age. Um, Cause that's one of the other things that like I saw with my wife's grandmother was she didn't have any of the paperwork uh, ready. So then it was just a lot of the scrambling at the end, trying to get the right paperwork, who's going to make the decision for um, at the hospital and so it's like, I think the lack of just financial preparation and the legal document is just like, those are the times that you don't want to be like, if you, if our parents get sick, we want to spend time with them, not right. be thinking That's about true. like money, but thinking about like, oh, we need, like, we don't have this medical directive. So like, it's important to start thinking about all those before, uh, before it's too late. That's so that's, true. yeah. Like estate planning, I think is, is pretty important. And then the other one is just general, like having money conversations with your parents, like regarding social security, Medicare, and that kind of segues into like, you start understanding like what accounts they have. And then you start getting like, okay, where do they have their checking account? Like, do they write their password down anywhere? (laughs) Like, (laughs) you know, um, so just kind of, uh, getting little by little, getting those information prepared, um, will just help with, anything down the line if something was to happen. So there's, there's stuff that you want to start thinking about. Yeah, I think that's good advice. Um, hopefully next year I'm, I'm doing a estate plan because right now I'm just going through custody. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. going to go through all that first and then estate planning. And yeah, I'll, I'll make a plan. <laughs> yeah, little by little. Yeah, yeah. little it's by all, little. Yeah, just one step at a time. Uh, I think that's all the question I have, Tay. I okay. can't think of anything else. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing your story. I mean, I, I heard your last podcast and I know you're just going through a lot in your life. And I think a lot of people can uh, really find value and just, you know, the courage that it takes for you to navigate this and think about your parents, about your daughter and, you know, being able to pursue FI. There's a lot, but you know, it's, uh, if you can do it, you know, other people can do it too. Right. Well, I, I think I, I thank you for being on here and talk to me because it helped motivate me at time. I just feel like Maybe I can't do this, but, yeah, you know, but every time when we have this counseling meeting, it, it helped motivate me again. So I yeah. appreciate all your advice. Yeah, so thank definitely. You, yeah, FI is a, it's a very, it's slow path, but then every time, if you, as long as you're making progress, that's what matters. Because when you first hear about it, you're like, I want to get there quickly as possible. Yeah. But it's like, it's not, an, it's not an overnight. It takes years. But yes. as long as you're moving towards the right direction, that's, you're, you know, you're doing things right. So. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Vivian. Bye. All right, Brad. I just, I loved how the episode came together. I I, I love how they were able to tie some very actionable details that people need to be considering with really what Vivian's actual goals are and maybe to some degree what her mom's goals are, right? In this case. I mean, that's a conversation that needs to be had. 
And uh, it looks like with some of the framework that Tay was able to provide, they will have some direction for some conversations that need to be had over the next, you know, six months to a year. I'm curious and, and, you know, what in particular stood out for you that we should start with? Yeah, I think for me, one of the most important kind of concepts just generally in life, but also when it comes to interpersonal dynamics is there is a cost for everything, right? That was a quote in there, which, which kind of slipped by, but I, I thought it was just really, really important to know that there are positives and there are negatives from situations. And you need to, you need to really think about, Hey, what is this going to look like when we're living together? And you have to give people some grace also, right? Like you're having, you're putting together multiple families, right? So there's a cost for everything. And what that meant was there are huge, huge positives of having your parents around, right? In their case, the grandkids get to grow up with their grandparents around and all the wisdom and love that that brings. But obviously having extra people in your household, there are going to be some minor conflicts and you have to be completely aware that, I mean, that's just table stakes, right? Like, you know, when you introduce new people into your house full time, like there are going to be conflicts. So just going into the situation with that in mind and knowing, keeping in the back of your mind, like always, wow, there are so many positives, not to mention childcare, right? Like, or, Hey, we want to go out on a date or we want to take a two night, uh, weekend vacation. Well, you've got built in childcare there, right? So, I mean, that's, that's pretty darn amazing. And that in a lot of senses makes up for, you know, these, these natural conflicts that are going to, they're going to arise. So yeah, I mean, Jonathan, I don't have anything like hugely actionable here, but you, you have to just generally be aware of this. And I think it's, it's really important. The other uh, conversation that they had was really talking about long-term uh, care insurance, the cost of long-term care insurance and how it is a nuanced conversation. And, and, and you know, I'm not, I haven't had a done, I haven't done a ton of research on this personally, but my understanding from conversations that, that I've had and that I've gleaned is that long-term care insurance used to be much more affordable. Uh, maybe like half of the premiums used to be about half of what they are now, maybe even a third of what they are now. And as long as you locked it in before someone was say 55 years old or 60 years old, um, you could make a very compelling case from an ROI perspective that you should probably just go ahead and do that. So the costs have gone up pretty dramatically. And th there is a question about whether or not uh, it's, you know, worth it. And, and again, talk to your point, Brad, the opportunity cost of doing it versus not doing it. And I think one thing that, uh, Tay said that I think was very wise is the best thing that you can do for your parents is to take care of yourself and get to the point where you are financially independent as quickly as possible. Uh, because ultimately, you know, as they, as they, as they get older, as they need more care, what they are probably going to need and what is implicitly, you know, it's, it's, it's embedded in this idea is they're going to need more of your help more of your time. Everything is more stressful and more expensive when you have no time because you're stuck in a job to afford the premiums on the long-term care insurance. Um, and that's a guaranteed locked in cost that you're, you're, you're accepting, you know, potentially way earlier than you need to. So it is a balancing act. I mean, you could hear the, the kind of the, 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 the level of discomfort and taste voice as he described it. It's not like something that there is an easy answer for healthcare is fundamentally broken here in the United States. And we're all just kind of in a holding pattern. But, you know, with that in mind, um, we kind of have to work with the best we have, in which case they're kind of getting the problem down into really for them, the, the, the two things that stood out, Brad, was how do we manage the gap between current age, which is mid late fifties to 65, where Medicare kicks in. Uh, and then what, how do we navigate, uh, social security as part of our financial planning? Those are the two things that I thought this episode really honed in on. And I think if you tie that with the fact that we do need to have these conversations and we probably need to do some sort of estate planning slash legacy binder around it, those three pillars right there are massive for any multi-generational family. Yeah, wholeheartedly agreed. And yeah, I mean, it brings to mind that we need to get someone on the show who's a true expert in social security, right? And making the decision of when do I start taking this? Because there are lots of decision points in there. And of course, it's always going to depend on your personal situation and what your income and assets look like, et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, there are decision points that people need to make that are critically important. So, I mean, that's something, Jonathan, we have not tackled overtly on the show in 400 plus episodes. So, I mean, I think that's something that clearly, clearly is, is, is something we need to look into ASAP. And yeah, it's funny. You mentioned, you know, really these conversations, I think 
I think that's, that's one of the things that I wanted to highlight. And, and I talked about this on the front half of, of the intro of the episode is this brought up for me, like you said, that, that binder, that family emergency binder in case of emergency binder that, that Chelsea Brennan talked about. This is something that you're going to have to have conversations with your parents and you're going to have to have some sense of what are their assets? Where are these things? You know, Tay brought up like, where are their accounts? Where, what are the passwords? You know, if they're incapacitated, how can you get into these accounts? How can you maybe pay bills that, you know, you don't want things getting into a point where they're going to collections because of an emergency that you just simply didn't plan for. And I think that's where, you know, this binder that Chelsea put together is remarkable. And yeah, you can always find that at chooseify.com slash binder. Yeah, this is something that literally thousands of people have bought and downloaded and taken action on. And I mean, it's it's not easy, right? I mean, it, it's Jonathan, you know, it takes it takes a couple hours to put this together at at least, but it's probably the best five to ten hours you're ever gonna spend because all of that information, like I think about that, you know, if I get hit by a bus, how much information is stored in my head that Laura would have to be scrambling for? Yep. I mean, that's just that's absurd. You know, that's negligence on my part. And, you know, this is something that I've kind of dabbled with in terms of filling out. But if I'm completely honest with myself and everybody listening, like I haven't done a 100% complete job on that. And again, I think that's just negligence. Ours is looking pretty good. Uh, yeah. Danny and I have been working on it. So she's, uh, she's put some energy into that and we've had the conversations. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm pretty happy with what she's got, got on paper there. I think we still have, there's just one section left that we are still kind of hashing out and and it's more just like great it's all there but what it, what does it mean it's a familiarity with it right this should also come with conversations like here's how i want you to use it uh and so um yeah we i'm i'm proud to say that that has been handled on the mendonza household and i'll give you a little go about finishing up yourself um <laughs> all right so yeah, so again, huge thanks to Tay for joining us on the show today. Go uh, let him know what you think about this episode. Check out his website, financialtortoise.com and Vivian for sharing her story and coming on just uh, really valuable for all of us to kind of hear the questions that she actually has because this is, this is life, my friends. This is life. And uh, if you are trying to get started on your own path to financial independence, you know, this sounded appealing, but you realize, you know, you're still trying to understand what some of these terms are and you're trying to look for an on-ramp uh, to get started. Let me encourage you, go to chooseofide.com slash start. We've put all of our resources there for you in one easy place for you to quickly on-ramp yourself and your family to this path to financial independence. The fire is spreading, my friends. We'll see you next time as we continue to go down the road less traveled.